Hello and welcome, I'm Austin Kowalczyk, a Ranger Composer, bringing you episode 14 of my book review series. Today we'll be discussing The Craft of Musical Composition, Book 1, Theory, by Paul Hindemith. So, Paul Hindemith. Hindemith is a slightly decisive figure in the composition world. Some people love him, and plenty don't. I'm kind of a mixed opinion. There are pieces I enjoy, such as his bassoon sonata, and uh, other pieces, not so much. Regardless, he's an influential figure in the history of composition, and left his mark on generations of composers that followed him. Stylistically, he was an opponent of Arnold Schoenberg's and others of his ilk from the Second Viennese School, who espoused the values of serialism, particularly twelve tones, while Hindemith espoused this concept of a, an extended, extended tonal system. And an important fact of his compositional philosophy, we'll call it, was that he considered the composer a craftsman rather than an artist, with music fulfilling a specific purpose, rather than fulfilling an internal internal sense of something, or fulfilling one's soul, as you could put it. He kind of coined this thought process, uh, gabrosh music, or utility music, music for a purpose. And while these are all important things about Hindemith, you know, there's the one thing that I'd say defined him throughout his career was this uh, important duty he felt that he and all other composers kind of have, which is the duty to pass down and teach and instruct the next generation. And I think that's a vital part of the five books he wrote, one of which being the one we'll talk about today. So the five books he did write were The Craft of Musical Composition, Book One Theory, Book Two Exercises in Two-Part Writing, A Concentrated Course in Traditional Harmony, Book One and Book Two, exercises for advanced students, and finally, elementary training for musicians. I don't believe this was in chronological order, but those are the five books he wrote. And of course, as I said today, I have book one of The Craft of Musical Composition Theory. For some context, I recently gave a small lecture recital uh, as part of a course I took this last semester, and the piece I presented on was Hindemith's Bassoon Sonata, which is a bit of a staple in the bass clarinet repertoire. There's a very specific story that goes along with that that I'm saving for another video, so I'll move on here from now. But this book was an instrumental part of my analysis, because Hindemith's extended tonal system does not use entirely the same verbiage and, let's say, jargon that traditional Western classical theory does. So I, I reread bits and pieces of this after my one full read-through, as I felt they were relevant to my analysis of the piece. And it... It left me with some impressions, let's say. So, the book is split into six chapters. The first being Introduction, then The Medium, then The Nature of Building Stones, Chapter 4, Harmony, Chapter 5, Melody, and Chapter 6 is a series of analyzations of pieces he's done in this style. More than just his own music, uh, there's several other examples in here, such as ba Johann Sebastian Bach's three-part invention in F minor, uh, Wagner's Tristan and Isolde, Prelude, uh, Stravinsky's Piano Sonata from 1924, Schoenberg's Klaverstruck, Opus 33a, and of course one of his own, uh, I believe a, cha a small opera he wrote. But... Hinnemis, Hinnemis' approach to this, which is something many people have done before, you know, a textbook on music composition and writing music, is uh, I think he, he takes a, a stab at something a lot of composers and instructors like to avoid, which is melody. Now, I won't give my, my opinion on the specific chapter of chapter 5, but it's, I can tell you it's a unique read. It very much relies on the concept that's very inherent in the book itself, this idea of force. The entire book is based around this concept where, you know, all, all things that happen in music need to be moving somewhere. There are, of course, objects without force, and he lists those in his many, many tables and illustrations throughout the book. But the, the concept of force is based around each chord interval in the piece having its own sense of force and movement. 
And you know, at a base level, this this theory, this concept makes sense to me. It's it, it kind of resonates with me, but I'm not reviewing his overall theory. I'm reviewing how well the book is set up and such. And uh, simply put, the book is a slog. It it's a long read. It's two hundred and thirty some pages, but the pages are very, very dense with text, very much full of jargon and technical terminology. And this is already this is a translation of the actual work in German. You know, and it feels like sometimes it's trying to explain the same concept to you several times over and over again, and it, it, sometimes it works. Sometimes I, you miss out on parts. I'm, you know, I I mentioned earlier I've read several portions of this book over and over again for this analysis, and I, I don't think I fully understand some of the concepts he's trying to give me in here. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, and I you can tell this is kind of set up as an introductory textbook, but I think. As an introductory textbook, it would do more. You know, it's, if this was being taught over a semester course, it would make more sense because I, I'd hope the professor understood it a lot more than I do, and they would spread out the teachings a little bit. But I also think that as an introductory concept, this might be a little bit easier to learn if you don't have a very thorough grounding in Western classical theory like I'm trying to give myself and my professors are trying to instill in me. You know, to un I, you might have to unlearn or ignore several concepts straight out just to understand what he's trying to tell you in this book. And I, I definitely feel like that was the case in certain areas. I couldn't always tell because the language is just very dry. It's very hard to understand at first glance. It's very much... Very much technical and heavy. Which, doesn't, which feels kind of at odds to its introductory style of textbook writing, but... You get that with some textbooks. But I I can tell you it, it was an interesting read. It's As I said earlier, I agree with some of these concepts. I, I get what they're going for. But I'm not sure I entirely understand them. There's A lot in here is very confusing. It's very dense, very technical. And I think that's my main complaint about the book, is how dense and technical it feels. But I think even in spite of that almost... I think that this will help me move forward in an interesting way in my compositional career. As I said, there are bits and pieces I can take away that I agree with. You know, and I, I do desperately agree with his idea that composers, composers, good composers and great composers are differentiated by how well they can teach. You know, I, I think many of the best composers I've met and talked to and I've read books on, which as you've seen, I do, I do quite frequently. I read a lot of books on this channel. The best books I've read were from composers who understood how to teach it well. And the composers I've talked to, they understood how to give a lesson very competently. And I think that that's... I think that's an important part of composition. And I kind of... I definitely agree with his take there. But in my final opinion, this book is... This book might be for you if you enjoy Hindemith music or you anything that I've said so far in this video that he's claimed in this book might resonate with you. Or maybe you just need a new direction to explore when you're a little stuck. You know, we all get times where we're stuck in a rut composing, and this might be helpful during that time. You know, maybe it'll resonate with you, maybe it won't. Bits and pieces did for me. But I think this is a worthwhile buy for me, and it might be for you depending on what I've said earlier. You know, and if if you think it might be a worthwhile read, I definitely encourage you to check it out. On a related note, um, I'm exploring. I'm going to explore some new options for content on this channel. I I might come back to Hindemith at some point and give a little more in-depth talk about his theory. Maybe after a few more rereads of this and his other books, just to kind of securely get it up here. And uh, if that interests you, I encourage you to stick around, follow the channel, and see if that does happen. Uh, you know, that's not. I'm not saying it's going to happen. It's an idea I've been toying around with as I've written this script over the last few days. But, you know, I, I highly encourage you to check it around if that sounds interesting. Stick around if that sounds interesting. Um, so if that interests you, or if you're familiar with the book and Hinduist teachings, I, I would encourage you to leave a comment and tell me your thoughts. I love hearing people's thoughts on things I discuss. And... I just I find it interesting to talk with others about these concepts, you know. But yeah, I, I enjoy hearing opinions on the things I discuss, and I'd love to see and hear your opinions on such a decisive figure and his unique take, I'd say, on composition. 
And if you've enjoyed this review, I've got 13 others up right now in a handily titled playlist labeled Book Reviews on my channel. And you can feel free to do the YouTube things if you'd like. Like and subscribe, all that, all that stuff. But, you know, if you want to see more from me in the future, I highly recommend doing that. So, thanks. I'll see you next time.